out um, about 25 right. years ago. Oh my God, he's back. <laughs> Julian, you moved, Julian, you moved out of what? Uh, New York City. I'm up in a town called Katona, New York. Hello, Julie. Hey, Julie. We wanted to say hi. <laughs> I sh I sh hello, shalom, everybody. Let Eva, let Eva tell Julie how she helped her during the pandemic. I think that was the nice. So, uh, theater critic Eva Heinemann is here on the. You know what? Let me let me give it a uh, hello, shalom to you, shalom, Julie. Welcome <laughs> back to the neighborhood, to the Dave's Gone By, Facebookio, uh, Podcastio, Programio of the Stream. I'm Rabbi Sal Solomon, and it was lovely to have you on the program. Lovely to have you back. And wasn't expecting this necessarily, but for at least a little, a uh, couple of moments, <laughs> we have other guests in the neighborhood. That those include. Producer Julian Schlossberg. We also have theater critic Eva Heinemann, who has a story about you to tell, and Leslie Hope and Blake, who is also a theater critic and former actress. So, first of all, shalom to you, Julie. How are you? Thank you, darling. And I must say, I love seeing all three of these people and you. I have known these people for a long time, and it is just so nice. It's. I feel like it's. I'm just. You know, I just feeling a real sort of, I don't know, a warm feeling. You're feeling inside. Yes, I'm cavelling. I'm cavelling. Um, anyway, nice to see everyone. And thank you, Eva, for bringing up during the pandemic. I had a wonderful show, actually, that Jim Caruso from Birdland made me do. He kept saying, you need to do something. You need to do something. You know, during the pandemic, I thought, like many people, it was gonna last like three weeks. And I was like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll sit, I'll have some chocolate, <laughs> I'll drink a glass of wine and it'll be over. Your eyelashes? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he said, let's do this virtual show. And it was a show called Virtual Halston. We did 41 episodes, it's still on YouTube. And I got to speak to the greatest people in the world. Bill Irwin, Nathan Lane, Paul Rudnick, Santino Fontana, Mary Lou Hanna, Mary Testa. I mean, I just, it, I, it was so fantastic. We were all in our homes and Jim and I also put graphics together. We worked with a young woman named Ruby Lochnar, who at the time wasn't even of legal age. She was 20 years old. She's beautiful. She's very talented. It was annoying, um, but, uh, but no, she's marvelous. And she's also a very talented singer. And we just had a blast. And it really, I, do you know, Eva and Julian and Leslie, I still get uh, text messages and messages and, and from people all across the country saying it really got us through a very difficult time. So I'm very grateful, very, very grateful. And I was able to raise money for the charity that I'm involved with, Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. So, which is also terribly. Now, I, I, I asked earlier when I was talking to uh, Julian Schlossberg because he was on the radio for a very long time on WMCA and WOR, interviewing famous people just as you had been. So, I asked him what are some of the best and worst interviews that he had as subjects. So, during your, so what did you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite story from the show? Tell me. Well. I have to tell you, uh, I mean, one of the most erudite and witty human beings on the planet is Me. Paul Rudnick. Oh, oh and you, second yeah. only to you, <laughs> is Paul Rudnick. Yes, and literally, terrible. his tweets about Ivanka Trump alone could be, you know, a play. The captions and, uh, of the pictures uh, are uh, it was, He's just hilarious. So gems would just spill out of his his mouth um but i've never really had a bad interview but i think one of the more fascinating interviews was mary lou henna because you know she has that wild photographic kind of memory where she can remember things i think only 60 people in the united states have it so that you can give her a date and she can say like 19 you know i was born 1968 uh, uh, you know, I don't know, March 11th, and she can tell you what was going on in her life. What, she would say, oh, that's a Tuesday, and you would remember, you know what I mean? She has this incredible facility, 
And we had people, you know, say dates and she told them what was going on in the world at that time. And I mean, decades and decades later. Plus she talked a lot about her childhood. Her parents ran a dance studio in their garage and their backyard. And she also had, her mom had a hair, stu- a hair salon in the kitchen. I, I mean, it was fantastic. And how many people died when they first realized you should open the door of the garage while the car's running? A lot of dancers were lost in a very <laughs> terrible way before they realized, you know, they probably should open the, the door of this thing. But let me, let me ask you also, so that was sort of her special skill. Do you, we know we, you're very funny. We know you can sing, actually. You discovered that one producer was finally putting you in Broadway musicals. So yeah, you can do a Broadway, you can do this. So, but is there a, a weird, unusual skill that you have? that a lot of people might not. Oh, uh, well, I can be very obnoxious. That's an unusual. I have that. No. Um, um, is there something that people might not know about me? Well, actually, there's a couple of things that people don't know, and sometimes they're a little surprised. I happen to be an enormous Yankees fan, and I'm a sports person. I love the, new, I love the Nets. I love watching sports. Uh, my dad was kind of a semi-pro golfer and he always had sports on in the, in the house. So I actually, uh, I, I like sports. And at one time in my life, and I should get back to it, I was a rather good baker. Oh my goodness, I did. Yes, I was a rather good baker. I, I, I made some very delicious cakes. Uh, I haven't done it in a while. Um, cooking, don't ask, don't ask. You know, grub hub, grub hub. But bake- I can give you all the flour you need because Julie, I, I decided to bake bread at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. And I baked two perfect loaves of sourdough bread and then I stopped. But I have 12 pounds of, of flour in my in my cupboard because okay, I bought Leslie. all the flour I could find because everybody said there wouldn't be any more flour. <clears throat> so I hoarded flour. So if, you, if you're really going to bake, listen, I need to go. I just wanted to say my little piece about Julie. When, when I interviewed you, you had just met Ralph. And the joke was, I got to interview Julie. She got to meet Ralph. That was the joke. I mean, this was, <laughs> we had dinner downtown, I think. It, it's I do Ralph remember it very well, Leslie. And you were so dear. And my oh. tagline was, because Ralph worked for 1010 Wins, is that he gave me 22 minutes and then I gave him the world. Um, oh. <laughs> so I, and, 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 and also reverse, you know, I gave him 22 minutes and he gave me the world and, but Leslie was such a, a, a um, you were so supportive of us. And, uh, oh. you know, the fact that I had 27 glorious years with that wonderful man. You were so fortunate. You really, were. I re- I know, I know. and very grateful and very blessed. So. And so was he. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to go. It was lovely. Yeah, it was lovely saying hi. Julian, lovely to meet you. Yeah. Julian, lovely to meet you. So, I don't know how to get off. I don't know how to get off. I'll let you, but Leslie is a okay. wonderful to have you in the neighborhood. Good health to you. Good to have Thank a wonderful you. day out of there after all these it's times. It's lovely to be back. Yeah. Next time I'll fix my hair. I just couldn't do it this morning. You look fantastic. Check up with Leslie, you. You look, you look great, Leslie. You look Julie, great. Julie, you look gorgeous, by the way. Yeah. I want well, to have you show at Birdland. Lighting, you new lighting. Show, you have a new show at Birdland, right? Yes, I'm doing my show at Birdland on Monday. So, you know, there's about, there's a few tickets left and there are some bar seats left. So seven okay. o'clock Birdland. And it's also streaming. You can watch this from I, home if you want. Yes! I yes! live around the corner, but I'm not ready to go back yet. I've, I've been quite ill. So I will, I will do the streaming one. Do but the stream. I'm You'll really enjoy. happy to see you. You'll enjoy. Okay. Shalom, oh, I'm, I'm going. Have bye, a wonderful guys. week. Thank you for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye bye. So, um, but, but do tell us a little bit more about your current cabaret show. It's called Back by Popular Demand, and it is happening this Monday night, January 30th, at Birdland, which is over on 44th Street and 8th Avenue in Midtown. So, this is is this about your life in pandemic, post pandemic? What's what's in the show? Um, well, yes. First of all, you're so good, Dave. I mean, you're really, Dave's gone by is so good to do all these things. Um, the show is actually called Declassified, and because uh, nothing is off limits, uh, it's about life during the pandemic and now my life after the lockdown. 
because a lot of things have happened. Uh, one of which is that I am dating again. Oh my God. And I went yeah. on social media. Okay, Cupid. I'm telling you, there's a lot of material here. So, um, so. All right, I'm going to stop you there because I want to know how is dating at this stage of the life you're an actress but um, you know you're surrounded by actors but most of them are gay so where do you where do you find you know the guys that you need <laughs> i'm just saying well here's the thing it was really through my girlfriends who kept saying to me you know julie you should do this you should do this so i finally said oh i know what i'll do you know just for fun I'll go out with my gay male friends. We'll go to like the St. Regis. I'll have a Cosmo and maybe I'll meet some guy. Well, my girlfriends were like, are you out of your mind? First of all, the hotels are closed. Second of all, Cosmos, nobody drinks them anymore. That's like the nineties. And <laughs> you don't need your gay male friends as wingmen. That's just crazy. So why don't you go on social media? Well, I wanted to just throw up the minute I heard that. I, I, I had not been with another person in 29 years. The idea of going on social media was horrifying. A very smart woman said to me, don't think of it as a place to fall in love or whatever. Think of it as your next one woman show. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, so smart. Because then it empowered me because I thought, okay, I'm not gonna worry about falling in love or anything. And you know, there's a lot of power in swiping left. You know, I found that out. It was like, oh, you're a loser. Yeah. Oh, who told you you were attractive? And what, a, are you kidding? You know, swipe left, swipe left. And then I actually, I met this guy who actually said, oh, Julie Halston, I'm a big fan of yours. I just wrote back to him. I said, thank you, you're gay. Um, <laughs> because you're a big fan of Julie Halston's. Yeah, probably. No, and I'm kidding. But all right. But was he was not? He uh, was he uh, or uh, no? No, this guy that I'm seeing, he didn't know who I was. He is a history professor. He has lived all over the world. I just kept going back to his profile, and finally we message. You know, you message. There's a lot of messaging. Then there's phone calls, and you know, and then there's meeting for coffee. And you know, then there's more coffee. There's a lot of coffee involved. And finally, he invited me to his house in Brooklyn. A house in Brooklyn? Yeah. Not a house. His he lives stone. in a brownstone. Oh, right. All right, still, still, yeah. I, you know, I'm a Manhattanite. I lived in Brooklyn in 1877. It didn't go well in those days. Oh, yeah, yeah. It didn't go well. Um, all my happiness has been derived in Manhattan. So I was just like, oh. Anyway, I tell a story in my act about the Uber driver who got me to this date. And I kept saying to my friends, look, I'm gonna give you this man's number, his address. And if I am not home by 9.30, I want you to call the police. And all I kept thinking to myself, I kept seeing a New York Post headline, right? Like deadly hookup, okay, stupid. I was terrified. And there I was in the back seat of this Uber and I'm going like, this meal better be good because I have a feeling he's gonna chop my head off. And, you know, I mean, he's very handsome and charming, but as I say in my act, well, so was Ted Bundy. Yeah, true. So. It, but it worked out. Oh, wait, good. And Mazel, so are you date? Are you exclusive dating? Are you just seeing the old Mazel? That way, yeah, I'm, I'm exclusive. Yeah. And it's none of my business, but I'm going to ask: Are you stopping again? <laughs> this is no, good. no, 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 no. Uh, it doesn't die. It doesn't does. die. Doesn't uh, die. Jewish no, this is the thing that's, that's all it is, really. But the, yes. the, the, no, but this is the thing that's so lovely and wonderful about life is that, you know, yearning and longing and connection and love and, and physical, emotional, whatever, it's all still there for us. It's all still there for us. Changes a little. I mean, certain positions not going to happen. Okay. Just going to say it. Good to know. Not going to happen. My so knees. The swings are coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah my the, the knees. Wait, ah, oh, the knee. Wait. 
But no, no, no really, longer, no longer the flying Willenders. No, no, the flying Willenders are definitely out there. Right. I urge everyone who is, uh, you know, thinking about this or lonely and 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 looking for love, you know, it it happens when you want it, and you but you got to go out. You got to go outside yourself. You can't just go like, well, I'm sitting here. Why isn't anyone? Where is everyone? You you have to go out in the world, and um, but it's been difficult because we were in a terrible lockdown situation. Of course. You know? And also you were still getting over the loss of a soulmate, a legitimate actual, not just a guy you happen to be married to, but a real- A soulmate and you know, it's been four and a half years. And what I've also come to understand is, and it is hard, I gotta say, I'm still navigating. I'm still navigating. Um, he, I, I, instead of saying, oh, it's getting further and further away. He's, he's, he's here. He's, in me, he'll always be part of. I'm baked. He's well, baked into my DNA. He's yeah. baked into my DNA in a way, you know. Yeah. And that life is, and that 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 never goes away, never. And if you have a partner, a new partner, they better understand that. And they, I, I can tell you, they they do, they do. Uh, Saul and Julie and Eva, I am gonna bail out. I had my time, Julie. It's your turn now. Uh, I loved you in Tootsie. You were just terrific. And we just had a Tootsie reunion, Julian. <laughs> oh, yeah. We just had a Tootsie reunion, and it was so fantastic. It, that was a wonderful show. Yeah. It was very funny. Very funny show. With very the, funny. Robert Horn did an incredible job. He did. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Shalom, and God bless, and uh, buy my you. book. <laughs> Thanks so much to Julian Schlossberg. Let's remind people that you can get his memoir, Try Not to Hold It Against Me, from Beaufort Books. It's available in just two more days. Oh, you can pre-order it. Get it now, for God's sakes. And also go to julianschlossbergproducer.com for more about this really delightful man. Please do come back to the Dave. He may want to talk to me. I don't blame you for not wanting to. But if you want to talk to Dave or something. I would love to talk to you, but I want to get Dave on the spot. I want to get him on the spot since he gave me questions that were absurd anyhow goodbye uh, uh, oh you have to go bye, bye, bye shalom to you and good health and many many more good things and best of luck with uh, in new jersey with um the play that you're with steve gutenberg best of luck oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. oh that's yeah. fabulous i want to hear more about that well all yeah. right I'll, i'm gonna look you I'm, i'll look it up julian okay i'm not gonna take your time but oh, that's all right bye-bye um, Julian in the Let me go now too. I mean, I was looking for you know because I mean you're you're supposed to talk to Julie. I just wanted to say again, thank you for those Friday night virtual halts and also in our chat we met such lovely people. I'm glad Ruby's doing so well, and I'm going I'm going to stream you for Birdland, and I'm like so excited to see you, and I hope you're still getting those wispy eyelashes. Oh yeah, oh I've got them. Oh honey, I've got them. Um, Eva, I'm always happy to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. And Eva, uh, good Shabbos to you. And thank you, of course, for being in the neighborhood with us once again. Love you. Mwah. And Mwah. have a wonderful... Oh, oh she's not good. So, Julie, we have, a, we have a few more minutes with you. I mean, it's so fantastic to, to see you, too. So, we're here with Julie Halston, whom you can see in person. This Monday night at Birdland, it's um, back by popular demand. And by the way, if you go to birdlandjazz.com, you can buy, I mean, the tickets are basically sold out, but they can probably still squeeze a couple of people in. They, they do. They have a few left and they're good. So you can get in. You can yeah, get in. You're not going to be staring through the roof, through the chimney to look at her down, you know, the top of her head. Or you can actually buy cheaper tickets and watch from home, like you're, you're watching her now singing. And do, are you doing music in there too, or is it just? Uh, no, it's all comedy. It's all anecdotal and stories and whatnot. But um, yeah, you know, when I do musicals, then I can sing and dance. But when I do my act, it's it's all fun, fun, fun stuff and stories about my life. Is there a story that you you were gonna put in the show, but uh, you know, for time considerations, didn't fit, but? Well, yes, actually, um, I did the show in October and it was a huge sellout, which is why I'm doing it again January 3rd, because a lot of people could not get in. So Jim Caruso said, let's do another round. And this one is selling out now, too, which is great. I tell a story 
in that one in October about my sister, but I'm now substituting for this show some selections from Joan Crawford's book, My Way of Life, uh, because we all know Joan Crawford is my Bible. Um, you know, because Joan has a lot of guidelines for how one should li live one's life. So I'm substituting certain stories for others, but for the most part, it's life during the pandemic and life post pandemic. Well, tell us a story though about your sister then. Well, my sister, my sister Mary, um, who lives in Virginia, <clears throat> is an American Revolutionary War reenactor. I will repeat that. Yeah, yeah. She is an American Revolutionary War reenactor. She's very involved with this. She won the Molly Pitcher Award. I don't know what that is, but she won it. She apparently um, is in charge of the canon. Again, you know. So what happened was a couple of, a number of years ago, there was an article in the New York Times about war reenactors. And one of the war reenactors stood too close to one of the cannons and in fact died. Well, that, we didn't just go deaf. He literally just really too close to the cannon. Too yeah. close. Yeah. So I called my sister, Mary, and I said, Mary, I just read this article in the New York Times about a war reenactor and he, he died. And I'm very concerned for you. She said, oh, oh, was that a civil war reenactor? I said, Yes, it was. She says, oh, those people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, they discovered later that the person actually manning the cannon was Alec Baldwin. So oh, there's, there's things to da, be... But I mean, really, it, it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing, particularly in more of the Southern states. I know Stephen Colbert has talked about his family was involved when he was growing up with reenactments and i don't i don't understand i don't, I'm, well not like i make a holocaust camp well, like, I was gonna say, like, up. yeah telling you, you're a rabbi what, what, what you know i mean come on yeah you no know, but i'm not gonna put go. together you know up in Monsey, new york and say oh let's build a like a mini auschwitz and recreate it we'll get the ovens going except at the end you really do use the ovens for food i was like no 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 why would i do this why would anyone no, why would you? But, you know, they do it in front of a lot of school kids. So they learn history, American history and whatnot. But it, it's just, yeah, I don't listen. My idea of reenactment is like the 1960s and I'm going to wear wigs and, you know, you know, mini skirts and whatnot. That's my idea of a reenactment, a Beatles concert. Yeah. That's my idea of a reenactment. If I dress up as Mordecai on Purim, that's right. a, there you go. Yeah. And I can I can be kind of free with the costuming too, so that that's. Now, where do you live, actually? Uh, well, I am. Um, my temple is in Great Neck, New York, which is a hell of a commute because we're currently in Maryland here, where where Dave and his lovely wife live. Okay. But uh, yeah, so so we're not that far from Virginia. I can I can be a reenactor of a of a Civil War Hasidic chaplain. Yeah, that's you could, darling. I mean, Manassas is not that far, and whatnot, but. And, and Great Neck, I actually lived in Great Neck for one summer uh, before uh, sophomore year of college. And Great Neck, Great Neck's a, a lovely community. Really. Oh, and absolutely. Well, until I moved in. And then later, <laughs> the house. All hell broke loose. It did. All <laughs> hell broke loose. Yeah. Mm. Uh, We're talking, by the way, with Julie Halston, who, in the pandemic, one of the other things that you did was you apparently made a movie. <clears throat> excuse, pardon for the throat thing. Tell us about a film called Simchas and Sorrows. You must. It's a beautiful film. Simchas and Sorrows was written and um, acted in, she's also the star, Genevieve Adams. In fact, I just had coffee with Genevieve. It's a beautiful story based on her life. A Christian girl who marries a Jewish guy. Oy. And how they navigate their lives together. And, you know, people today might go like, oh, well, that happens all the time now. You know, well, why is this the subject of a film? You know, a lot of there's a lot of interfaith marriages now. But, you know, 
it does it does impact how are you going to raise your children? Oh, absolutely. How are you, you know, what do you really believe and what do you not really believe? What are you taking with you culturally? What are you taking with you culturally? Here's the shtickle. Do, do we cut here? Do we leave it? Do we leave the thing? No, I mean, it's, it's a big question. It's a big question. And how does it impact the parents, particularly parents who might have had parents who actually were in the Holocaust? There's all sorts of big questions. And she made this delightful film about not only navigating the interfaith situation, but you know how we um, are trying to do this while we're also trying to be creative people, good people. Uh, you know, it's 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 these are the big questions that don't go away just because it's two thousand and twenty three. So um, we made the film, and you know, we all wore the masks. We all had to be socially distant. We didn't really eat together closely. We, you know, we had to really go by the guidelines. And then when we were on the set, we could take our masks off, but we were very good about all this stuff and all the makeup artists and hair, everyone was masked. So, and no one got sick. Have you gotten COVID, by the way? Have you, uh, in, in the past three years, did you get, get it? Or are you? I had it once. Yeah. It was very mild. Uh, I'm a vax boosted, but um, it was mild. I was very congested for about five days. And, uh, and then it, it, did, it did go away. Um, I haven't had a repeat, but you know, I know people who have had it two, three times. And then I know a, a dear friend of mine who, who is, you know, not young, has never had it. So, it, it, no, it's it's a crapshoot, which is it, it is. Have you had it? Well, uh, uh, apparently, I I have constant brain fog, which explains a lot. No, but I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. But let me let me ask you also, since we're speaking of health, it's been a rather interesting uh, year, a past few months for people that you were probably quite. Close to first of all, we almost lost, did not lose, but almost lost Charles Bush. Yes. Who gave you in some ways your start. Oh he, no, my he, career. He gave me my career. He there did. you go. Yeah, he's, he's I, I'm sure you're more in touch than we are. He's been on the show, but how's he doing? We had the heart tell. Darling, he's doing great. He had a heart surgery. He had to have his mitral valve repaired. You know, it's not a small thing, you know. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's not a little cut um, and it's a big cut uh, and he is doing really, really well. He's really out and about. So thank God. Um, we did lose the primary stages uh, artistic director, Andrew Lindsay yeah. to sepsis. And I got to tell you, we're all still in terrible, terrible shock. I just lost one of my dearest college friends, Gordon, to pulmonary fibrosis, the disease that took my late husband. So, I, I mean, and these are not old people. Andrew was in his 50s. Gordon was in his 60s. I mean, these are not... These, Don't tell that to Republicans or they're going to blame the, the shots. So should. Make no, the, I know, please. We yeah. can't even go there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been a very hard time. And I have to say, um, it has got me um, a, a little uh, upset and, 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 and looking back and, 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 and a little, there's, there's quite a bit of sadness with that. I and mean, we just also, so, uh, I'm not to leave out someone, but Everett Quinton of the, um, the Ridiculous Theatrical coming. Um, yeah. I just read, the New York Times um, obit. And whenever it passed away a number of nights ago, I wrote to a dear friend of his and I said, the New York Times better do an obit about Everett because he was so important to the theater scene and he was such a dear man. He was at my wedding to Ralph. And I, for the first couple of days after his passing, I didn't see an obit, I didn't see an obit. I was ready to call the New York Times it is in today and it's a wonderful obit and he was such a dear 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 guy and he really it was charles ludlam charles bush everett quinton murray hill 
uh, Lip Synca. We were all part of that incredible scene in the 1980s, late 70s, 80s. And these people like Charles Ludlam and Everett had tremendous influence on all of us. Now, um, I, do you have a couple more minutes that, that we can spend with you before, because uh, as we're coming up on the half hour, but I do want to, uh, since we're talking about those days, and even modern days, when you're doing Broadway shows and cabaret things, but you, you, you said in an interview that you are terrible, very often, in rehearsals. That, terrible. Terrible. Is I it cannot be, Why? I, I don't really know why. I think it takes me a long time, dare I use this word, because I'm not a method actress, but to process everything, the words, the actions, the props. The, but here's where I'm a little bit more like, I think the Brits, the minute I find the hat or the coat or the dress or the shoes, it has such an impact on me and it allows me to find the character. But you know, those elements don't come in until later on in the rehearsal process. So I'm always one of those people who likes to put the shoes on pretty quickly because it helps me figure out the way I'm gonna walk and whatnot. Um, no, I'm terrible in rehearsal, but also remember, I, I'm used to doing comedy and comedy is completed when the audience is there. So when I don't have an audience, I'm like, oh. Is that, how, do you, how do you get through that when you're rehearsing comedy or when you're working on your act and stuff and you have a line and you know you're being funny, you know it's funny and it's just dead silence because A, there's no real audience there or B, you know, these people who laughed around the table in rehearsals have now heard that line 80 times and, and you're like, I mean, da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean, does something sink in you or you just, I just have to wait till the audience gets here. No, something sinks in me. I will tell you that. And I've, I've talked to other actors about this. We sink, we do sink. And we sink to the bottom, let me tell you. Um, but then the first preview happens and you hear the laughter. So suddenly from the bottom of the ocean, you are now above the waves. Um, but I was very lucky because my late husband, Ralph Howard was a very good editor and he was a good audience member. And he used to go through my act with me sometimes. And it wasn't even like he would laugh, you know, uh, frequently he would just say like, oh, that's funny. You know, kind of like other comics who go to see other comics. But he was always, he'd always say to me, extend that line a little bit. Or he'd say, Julie, that's a funny line. Now look at the audience and give a little take to the audience. He was the one who came up with all these little things. I learned so much from Ralph. He was not only my husband, he was really like my mentor. So it was really helpful to me because, you know, yeah, I'm doing it in the living room. My poor neighbors, you know, <laughs> believe me, at this point, they're like, she ain't funny. We've heard this a million times, but ah. he, he was such a good editor. Now, can I ask, I know that you're doing the show on, at Birdland on Monday night. Uh, it's called Back by Popular Demand, and people right. can get tickets. They can still they'll squeeze you in. There's a little, a few more places for physical humans to be yes. on the street in 8th Avenue at Birdland. And also you can buy tickets to live stream the show from Birdland on Monday night. Just go to birdlandjazz.com for that. But what's next? What, what's on your calendar for the next three to six months? Well, um, I'm happy to say that, and I think I can say this because uh, I actually put it on my Instagram. I, um, I filmed a number of episodes of And Just Like That, which oh, yeah. is the Sex in the City reboot. So my character of Bitsy Von Muffling has come back. So I'm happy to report that when the show is on again, you will be seeing Bitsy Von Muffling. So I'm very happy to report that. And um, I am, I'm not really sure yet, but um, I'm working on a reading of another play. So I can't really talk about it yet, but okay. I'm, I'm doing a few readings on some new projects. I love being on television. I love doing films. 
And yet I'm also hopeful that the theater, and I think slowly but surely the theater is starting to come back. And it's been a rough, rough three years, yeah. but um, you know. Because nothing... Broadway is one thing where the big shows make are making tons of money, but all the anything that's littler, all the opera, opera Broadway must have been having a very, very uh, difficult. Very tough time, and a lot of th theater companies closed. They closed, Wait, who, and that who, was yeah. terrible. So I'm praying and hoping that once again people will come out and I think it's starting, but it's just starting. So I'm hoping within this year to next year, we see a real rebound because let's face it, it didn't not, it not only affected the theaters, it affected bars, restaurants, everything around those theaters. But I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go there and be optimistic. Well, I'm be optimistic. Great way, but we, how could you not be optimistic looking at the punim of Julie, that means face, by the way, the punim of Julie Alston, who's, as we said, going to be in back by popular demand this Monday night. It's been, a, I'm going to ask you one more question, and, and I, I know it's time to let you go, but see you at Birdland on Monday evening, please, birdlandjazz.com for tickets. So tell us, because uh, uh, Dave saw you a couple of times in Tootsie when that was, it was a very, very, as we, we say, a very funny show. Do you have a Tootsie story, something funny that happened on on stage, something, uh, some some great person that came backstage and told us, tell us a twist. Oh, oh I can tell you something. We had someone come in. I don't know how they got past security. It, it, it was this person who uh, just wandered into the theater and literally made themselves in, went up to the hair and makeup department, sat down in one of the chairs and said, I want to be Tootsie. There's someone from the street, someone from the street just came in. Well, the poor hair and makeup people didn't know what to do. I had to go on and like- Oh, this was during, I thought my baby- This is during the show, oh, during oh, the oh. show. And he insisted that he wanted to be made up like Tootsie. They didn't know what to do. Well, you know, I played the very tough, hard bitten producer, Rita Marshall, they, they saw me because I was, I had a little time off before my next appearance in the show. They said, Julie, there's, there's a stranger in the hair and makeup department and they wanna be Tootsie and we don't know what to do. I, we don't know who they are. I, they seem to be kind of mad. I walked in there and I pretended to be, you know, Rita Marshall. And I said, who are you? I am the producer of Tootsie. I am Rita Marshall and you have to leave immediately. They were so scared by Rita Marshall. And I said, I will be escorting you out the building. And I, I just be became Rita Marshall and I escorted them out the building and we called security and they were, this was all during the show. <laughs> My, and, and by the way, that it turned out to be it was Dustin Hoffman. So who oh, knows? There you go. Direct done. It's hard to recognize these days, but I well, bet he's a he's a little older. I would have. Been. At least it wasn't Murray Shiskal. That would have been really good. <laughs> but anyway, we've been delightfully chatting with Julie Halston. Much luck, much health, much much success. Do you ever say? I, I, I last, last, last question. Let's say things go really, really continue to go well with the, this this nice little uh, history professor. Here. Do you ever see the M word again, or no need for, to even consider something like that? I'm not there yet. Considerations are always there. You never say never. Never say never. This is good. well. No, I mean, you're, not, you're never going to get a bris. I mean, this is not going to happen. You're not going to get yourself a bris under any circumstances. Even if you were taken to Africa into a tribe where they do that sort of thing, you're not, it's not going to happen. But no, I, I see. Never say, but, I see. But, love, I, but love, love is love is love is love. So there we have it. Well, so we love you. All I'm going to say. Yeah. We love Julie Holston in the neighborhood. See her Monday night at Birdland. Shalom to you. Thank you so much. And Shalom, have a darling. Fun. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Shalom to you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Julie Holstein in the David. Oh, how delightful. Oh, how wonderful.
wonderful. I am Rabbi Saul Solomon, the founder, spiritual leader of Temple Sons of Bitches in Great Neck, New York. And we still have some more show for you, more of the Daves gone by, Facebook, your podcast, your program, yo of the stream featuring Dave. So we're going to bring him back. We're going to leave me go. Okay, play some music again. Oh, it's so, so fun for me to be here twice. I should just take over the show. The hell with Dave. This should be the Rabbi Sal show. That's, that would make this a program. But for now, eh, we'll bring back Dave. <laughs>